Welcome everyone, Lonnie Payne here with another pinball video for you. This is part 5 of my Apollo 13 restoration. In this part, I will be finishing up the inserts, doing a little bit of touch-up work on the playfield, and getting the playfield ready to clear coat. So if you're ready, let's go. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. All right, I've got all the inserts off that I'm taking off, except the moon inserts. I'll save those for last because I think those are going to be kind of challenging. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to get into, but there was a few inserts that weren't ghosting, but after working on it, I just decided to replace them all. The only ones I'm not doing are these docks just because they'd just be pretty complicated to replace and there's no sign of any problems there in these little asteroid areas just because of the way they are. But I will sand all these inserts before I clear it, but got them all off and I didn't feel like I needed to show you. I already showed you how to do one, so I just went in and did the other. So now I'm going to tackle these moon inserts and hopefully that's what's underneath. So it'll all be uniform, but I got to take them all off because I got to take this one off because it's damaged and I want them all to look the same. So they're all coming off. So, All right, I guess I'm going to go ahead and do this. This one first because it's the the most damaged anyways. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score a line kind of in the middle of this black area. And the reason I'm doing that is because some of these inserts are a little bit off center and the insert itself goes out into the colored artwork. So if I just take it off <clears throat> without doing anything, it might actually take the paint off out to the edge of the insert. So it's kind of like an expansion joint in concrete. I'm going to give it a little score. So hopefully that's where the artwork will stop, you know, as, as I'm chipping it off. So you can already see there's already, this piece is already missing and that's just been painted over. So I, th I think I'm going to be okay that the, there'll be opaque inserts on the inside. And if that's, that's the case, then that'll work really nice for the replacements, but we'll, take it off and kind of see what we got going on here. Like I said, it really doesn't matter where this line is as long as it's somewhere in the black because the insert that I'm going to cut in vinyl will actually be the same width as the, the black, so it'll be covered up but we just don't want to go all the way out to the edge and then risk losing some of that blue artwork. And this stuff is so brittle it tends to chip if you press too hard with the knife, so you kind of kind of got to be a little bit gentle with it. And then I found that this flat blade kind of works the best for taking it off. See, that actually chipped a little bit further than I wanted it to. I'm going to score that line just a little bit more. Still within the black, but flirting with the edge there. And it doesn't even matter if you're going into the wood or whatever because, the you know, the clear is going to level it all out. So then you'll have the the vinyl edge over it so that's that's not a big deal after a layer of clear and some sanding and stuff you'll you'll never be able to see the groove you cut or anything so you can kind of see now it's kind of it's kind of breaking on that score line so that's what we want. Try and minimize the damage here. And I apologize if the if the camera is shaking a little bit. It's on the play field. It's the only way I could get a good angle on it. And of course I'm touching the play field, so it's moving a little bit. I don't know what happened to this thing or why it's as damaged as it is, but so you can see on this end, the score line was actually into the wood. But if you look on this side, 
I can actually see the edge of the insert goes right into the edge of that blue there. So you can see that the insert's a little bit off center from the artwork. So that's why you want to try and figure out where you're at before you just start blindly doing anything here. See right there, you can see that, that that went right to the edge of the insert, right there. It kind of popped off, and that's right on the edge of the blue. So we're still going to be okay, but that's what I'm talking about as far as you want to try and avoid that kind of stuff if you can. Now this is still discolored. That's just dirt, it looks like, because that's there's nothing on there now. So it kind of looked like there was still some clear on there but you can kind of see that's just all coming off that's just dirt from being exposed and playing and this was just a some kind of paint fix right there so we really only have to scrape enough paint to be on the inside of the insert when we put the new one on but Flat blade works really good for this kind of stuff. You want to try to avoid scoring the insert with a point, you know, when you can. Just it can be fixed, just takes more sanding and stuff. Pretty much everything's done on this one now, except for the like sanding. We'll sand it and dress it up. But, you know, even this rough edge, that'll be under the vinyl when I put it back on. It'll be real thick like this. So I'm going to do the rest of these inserts. No use showing you. It's the exact same process. And it looks like we'll be fine with, with that opaque insert. We'll just have to cut the black. And I think it'll, it'll look beautiful once we're done. Got all of them done now. Kind of interesting. This one was already delaminating. It was one of those where you could press, the, you could press it and see it move. But I, I scored the edges, and I mean, these things came off so easy. It, it was literally 10 seconds each. They just came right out. So kind of, kind of interesting, just wasn't sticking. Biggest thing left now is try and show you this without risking any damage. Got an edge of this insert that is i don't know if you can see that but it's it's not not down so i, I need to glue that down before i clear because i don't want to have any that thing could easily come off when i'm cleaning so i've got to just look over the play field make sure there's not any more of those and uh just get get everything kind of ready it's um, not too much more to fix and then uh We'll be able to clear it. Okay, to fix that problem, I mixed up a little bit of clear. It's still the same four to one ratio as when I normally clear a play field. And then I'm gonna use this needle to insert it in there. And we'll see if we can clamp that down and All right, just like the other one, got wax paper, piece of leg sand. I'm gonna put it on there. All right, and we'll just leave that overnight. I'll look through the play field, see if I got any uh, any more of those to fix. All right, I ended up having three spots that, that had stuff that needed to be glued down. So I got my two big clamps, and I had to kind of think outside the box because I wanted to fix this too. So just got a yardstick with a couple clamps with the, the same piece of plastic and wax paper under it. So see what happens here. All 
All right, the tip of this one was kind of coming up, so kind of try and get some light on it. Yeah, it looks really flat, stuck. Just a real smidgen of, of extra clear on this edge because I, I put some under this edge too. So we'll just sand that down and uh, it'll be ready. So let's take these other two clamps off and see how these things look. All right, got all the clamps off. Of course, this was the main spot I had showed you. And this is all nice and flat and secure now. There's no, no bubbling, it's not loose anymore. The other one that I found was right here on the spaceship. And of course, this is a fully covered, art covered insert. So that was a little concerning. <clears throat> there was a little bit of an end piece up here. There was a little bit of a gap there. And so I was able to inject some clear under there, clamp it. Now that thing is all nice, nice and flat. And then uh, we'll just take, and there's, there's a couple different inserts and in there. You see just a little bit of white around where the edge of the plastic is on the insert. And we'll actually put a little bit of black paint on there before we clear. That's one of those things I feel comfortable touching up before I clear. Because there's several inserts that we'll have to do that with. And uh, it's not a big deal. So we'll just uh, keep on working. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I'm going to do a close inspection on the rest of the play field. See if there's anything else to do. And keep moving. Okay, before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and basically sand the whole play field and just taking the, the shine off and give it some grit for the clear to stick to. But I want to go ahead and do that before I do any kind of final touch-ups so I got a good view of what I'm looking at. And the way I do that, for this stage, I use a 320 grit. Uh, it's a kind of a scouring pad sandpaper instead of a regular sandpaper. I'm not really trying to sand anything off. I just want to rough up the surface so it'll uh, give it a clear somewhere to stick. And this does a good job with that because you don't have to worry about sanding through anything. You're just clearing it up. So I'm going to do that and then we'll uh, continue. And to just try and show you, I don't know if this will really show up on video or not, but you can see this is a really shiny area. And so what I'm going to do is as I start to to move this kind of like seeing swirl marks on your car it just really starts to to get dull sorry about that squeak it's in my uh, mount system here and you can kind of see it's it's kind of dull now and we'll just work over the whole play field and just and we, we may go a little bit more aggressive but that's a, a pretty good look so we'll see how it looks when we're done play field's now scuffed and then you kind of see the, sh the shine's kind of gone from it. It still has a little bit of shine, but, but it's not that real clear shine like you normally see. It's got a little bit of a milkiness to it. And what the sanding does, it really brings out any of the things you're going to have to fix. And the reason is, is the little particles of the clear kind of get in the little grooves of things that are not good. Like around this insert, you'll see, you know, you can see a good little outline. Now it's not as bad as it looks because like I said, all that powder is in there. We clean that and that'll go away. So it's, it's not as bad as it looks, but it really brings it to the attention. You can kind of see where the mylar was around here because of the way it sands a little different. So, I mean, you, you know, it kind of really brings out anything that's wrong with the play field. So put a little naphtha on there, cleans all that up and it's still there, but it's a lot less faint than it was. You can see the, the colors and everything really come back with that naphtha on there. Just clean a lot of this residue up in the entire play field here. And this stuff does not take long to dry at all. So it's a really, in fact, you just blow on a little bit. And so now that the haziness is back, the line is almost not seeable. But we know it's there, and so we'll we'll do a little bit of paint technique to try and fix some of that. And then that's the only kind of paint technique I do before I clear is some of those crack lines, try and get it, some paint in there, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Okay, I went ahead and put it on the rigid base. I like to have a little bit better base when I'm starting to work on this stuff. I don't need the rotisserie anymore. One of the things I like to do, and this is just a personal thing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sand this area so I can get rid of these marks with the brackets i just i don't know when i'm doing the whole play field i just i want everything to look good even even when you can't see it but so it's just a personal thing so just take some sandpaper and just got to sand it down 
stuff gets embedded in the clear. So I'll continue to work on this and should, uh, should clean up nice. I'll do this for this bracket, these here, and then uh, a little bit over here and we'll... Okay, got this all sanded down now. Took all the dirt and stuff off that was ground in there. So now I know when I get the play field done, I can look at this and not be looking at those things. It's just, I don't know. I just like things to be done right. All right, most of what I do before I clear, as far as insert painting, is just fix black. It's, uh, it's the easiest color to match, and you don't really have to worry about messing up too much. And like I said, you just don't want to get too creative with the paint before you you clear in case you, you mess up. So what I'll try and do mainly is just fill these little, little cracks. And the paint of choice for me is it's Cretex Wicked Colors. And then I also use regular Cretex. And I'll cover more of that when I airbrush. But... This is a great paint, and one thing you want to make sure is you use a paint that's compatible with your clear coat. Don't be fixing this with testers or a paint pen or anything, because if, if you ever want to use automotive clear coat, it'll run. So this, I've had great luck with this, and so this is what we'll use to fix it, and I'll show you how to do it. All right, I hope you can see this. We're going to try and fix this. I may hope I don't get in the way too much, but sometimes I need better eyes than I got, so I may have to use a little magnifier. But what you're going to do using a pretty pretty small paintbrush just kind of put some paint on that line okay and then you're just going to kind of really lightly wipe it off and hopefully some of the black stays in that line not sure if you can see that but it's pretty much gone. Now here's where you can say, okay, I see that black though. So that's going to show up. Well, here's where you use your naphtha to see what colors will look like when you clear. So you got to remember we sanded the under clear coat, so it's got a milky look. Well, the paint has its gloss look to it. So when you rub this naphtha over there, you'll see what they'll both look like together. And it, look, it all blends in and looks looks great. Now you don't want to keep rubbing naphtha on there all the time to you'll end up digging the paint out. But I can't see anything. There's no white line there anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go fix all those on the play field. Another thing I'll do at this point is there's a several as long as long as they're black that I'm I'm going to go ahead and paint just cuz if a post is there 95% of this is going to be under the post, but if there's just a hair out on the edge that is going to show, I want it to be more of a black than a wood color. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint around some of those too at this point. So anyways, anything like that that's going to be visible, I, I try and clean it up a little bit if I can. And once again, we'll run naphtha over it, and it, it kind of all blends in. You don't see it. So once we get clear on there and uh, put a post on there, you'll never know, but you won't see any little ticks of white or anything. Hope you enjoyed the video. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope maybe you learned something. Please leave me some comments in the section below. Just let me know what you think or any questions you might have. Anybody that has watched my restoration posts on Pinside will know that once you get the play field clear, 
that's when the real fun begins because you really get to see the transformation of your machine into what it's going to be. Sometimes it's frustrating, but it's rewarding. So I'm looking forward to that part. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you on the next one. Well, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, that's perfect timing. Take two.